The significance of Jesus' sacrifice, redemption through his blood, Hebrews 10, 1 through 18. The law was only a shadow of the good things coming, not the realities themselves. That is why I could never, by the same sacrifices, repeated continuously year after year, make perfect those who drew near to worship. Otherwise, they would not have stopped being offered. For the worshipers would have been cleansed once and for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. The blood of bulls and goats uh, cannot uh, take away sins. They were never intended to. Likewise, no work can clear your conscience of sin today. If we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. Anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. Hebrews 10, 26-29 First one speaks of the good things that have come. Jesus came and preached peace to those who were far away from God and peace to those who were near. That is why only through Jesus do we have access to the Father through one Spirit. Jesus is our peace who has made the two one and has torn down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and decrees in his flesh. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. God loved the world so much, not just the Jews, that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because of Adam and has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son, John 3, 16 through 18. The old system under Moses' law was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship and their feelings of guilt never disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices reminded them of their sins year after year. For the blood of bulls and goats is not enough to take away the consciousness of, or guilt of sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you no longer want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O oh God, as is written about me in the scriptures, as in the garden when Jesus was making his final decision uh, to die on our behalf. He was challenged. He struggled. He was under great agony. But in the end, he said, God, not my will, but your will be done. Which is why we are sitting here today uh, reading this knowledge that he's left for us to make the same decisions. This is a reminder to professing believers. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of God. Matthew 7, 13 through 23. When you gave your life to the Lord, you agreed to follow God's will for your life. God's will is for you to be holy and to stay away from sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 3. Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died to redeem them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. The significance of Christ as the mediator of a new covenant is powerful. In the Old Testament, the covenant was established through the Mosaic law which required continuous sacrifices to atone for sin. However, Christ's role as the mediator of a new covenant changed this system. Through his sacrifice, he offered a permanent solution for forgiven sins. Christ's sacrifice 
purifies born-again believers conscious from dead works, allowing us to serve the living God. By establishing the new covenant, Christ provided a way for believers to receive the promised eternal inheritance through his redemptive work. This new covenant represents a massive fundamental shift from the old ways, emphasizing grace, forgiveness, and eternal life through Christ. Scripture says that in the case of a wheel, it is necessary to establish the death of the one who made it because it does not take effect until the one who made it has died and it cannot be executed while he is still alive. That is why it is necessary to establish the death of the person who made the wheel. It serves as a crucial factor in determining the validity and execution of the wheel. The tester's death starts the legal process of probate during which the wheel is examined and authenticated. This verification process ensures that the law carries out the wishes outlined in the wheel. Additionally, confirming the tester's death prevents unauthorized changes to the wheel after their passing. This is significant because Jesus' victory over Satan and undoing his work, born again believers inherit all that was lost and promised through Adam's disobedience, restoring all things to God's original intent, Genesis 1, 26 through 31. Therefore, when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made by hands and is not a part of this creation. Christ entered heaven itself, now to appear on our behalf in the presence of God. Jesus said, God loves me because I laid out my life freely. No one takes it away from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it back. This commandment I received from my Father, John 10, 17 and 18. Just like Jesus, we are required by God to freely offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God which is our spiritual service of worship, Romans 12, 1 and 2. The greater, more perfect tabernacle refers to God's sanctuary or dwelling place, emphasizing its superiority and completeness compared to the earthly tabernacle constructed by Moses. Through the redemptive work of Jesus and your faith in that work, you are now the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. Scriptures say that if anyone destroys the temple of God, God will destroy that person because the temple of God is holy and that is what you are. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. The righteousness brought in and the sacrifice once offered by Christ is of eternal power and his salvation shall never be done away. They are of power to make all those who come to Christ perfect. They derive from the Toning blood, strength, motives for obedience, and inward comfort. This was to demonstrate God's righteousness because, in God's merciful restraint, He let the sins previously committed go unpunished to demonstrate His righteousness at the present so that He would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Romans 3 21 through 26. Therefore, let no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as Christ is. The one who practices sin is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the very beginning. This is why the Son of God was revealed, to destroy the works of the devil. Anyone born of God refuses to practice sin, because God's seed abides in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. By this, the children of God are distinguished from the children of the devil. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. 1 John 3, 3-10. In verses 11 and 12, they emphasize that Christ's entry into the most holy place was made possible by his own blood, which secured eternal redemption for all. This signifies the unique and ultimate nature of Christ's sacrifice for the redemption of humanity. Therefore, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among mankind by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 This is the good news of the gospel. God is no longer holding humanity's sins against them. Jesus, the second Adam, paid the sin debt created by the first Adam. Romans 5.19, 2 Corinthians 5.19 The significance of God's need for a blood sacrifice for sin being satisfied through Jesus' death 
is rooted in the concept of atonement. In the Old Testament, the sacrificial system required the shedding of blood to forgive sins. This shedding of blood symbolized the cost of sin and the need for a perfect sacrifice to atone for it. Jesus' death on the cross fulfilled this requirement once and for all, serving as the ultimate and perfect sacrifice for the sins of humanity. By offering himself as the sacrificial lamb, Jesus satisfied the requirement for atonement, reconciling humanity with God, and opening the way for forgiveness and redemption. Verses 15 through 18 say that the Holy Spirit also testifies to us. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. The significance of Jesus being the mediator of a new covenant lies in the promise of a transformed relationship between God and humanity. It signifies a shift from the old covenant which was based on the law and animal sacrifices to a new covenant based on grace and the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus. This new covenant offers the promised eternal inheritance to those who are called, signifying the assurance of salvation and eternal life for believers. Through Jesus' role as the mediator of this new covenant, believers can access the blessings and benefits of this everlasting promise and experience a deepened relationship with God. This act demonstrates God's love, justice, and mercy and provide a path to restore humanity to a right relationship with God. God is now at peace with humanity. God's need for a blood sacrifice for sin has been satisfied through Jesus' death. Ephesians 2, 11 through 22, and Hebrews 9, 22. Although God has made peace with humanity, humanity is still under the condemnation of sin and has to make peace with God if it wants to have a relationship with and spend eternity with God. However, to make peace with God, humanity must accept God's offer of peace, salvation, which starts with being born again through faith in Jesus. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, those who accept him can hold firmly to their confession. We now have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, who has been tempted in all things, just as we are, yet without sin. This is significant today because it puts born-again believers under obligation to put to death the, need, the deeds of the flesh through the power of the Holy Spirit, because all who the, whole, the Spirit of God is leading are sons and daughters of God, Romans 8, 12 through 14. Therefore, we can approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find graceful help at the time of our need, Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. That is why God said to Moses, I will also do this thing of which you have spoken, for you have found favor with me. You cannot see my face, for mankind shall not see me and live, Exodus 30, 17 through 23. Therefore God says, do not go on bringing your worthless offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the proclamation of an assembly that cannot endure wrongdoings and the festive assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am tired of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Obtain justice for the orphan. Plead for the widow's case. Isaiah 1, 13-17. Prove by how you live that you have repented uh, to your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we are safe for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Matthew 3, 8 through 10. So in closing, Jesus' sacrifice emphasizes that the sacrifices prescribed by the law were only a temporary solution serving as a reminder of sins rather than providing permanent atonement. 
The text also emphasizes the superiority of Jesus' sacrifice over the previous offerings, highlighting the purity and efficiency of his blood in purifying our consciences and securing eternal inheritance for those who believe in him. Overall, the text underscores the transformative power of Jesus' sacrifice and God's fulfillment of his will by providing a new covenant through his death. Therefore, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, and those who accept him can hold firmly to their confession. We now have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, who has been tempted in all things just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, we can approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace for help at the time of our need, Hebrews 4, 4 through 16. So, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. All of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us the task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciled the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. Meditate on these things. Hear what the Lord is saying. Be blessed and be a blessing to all you come in contact with so that the world will know hope and deliverance is here. Until the whole world knows, be blessed.